Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the June edition of the APA Agora. I'm Lou Marinoff, your host today, and it's a, a great pleasure to welcome a very distinguished guest, Professor Ibrahim Ostemir from Turkey, who's currently visiting Clark University in the USA. And before we get started, uh, please uh, allow me to introduce him to you. Professor Ozdemir is, in fact, professor of philosophy at Uskudar University in Istanbul, Turkey. He's also dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences there, and additionally founding president of Hassan Kalyonsu University. Uh, we're going to ask you about that later, how you managed to found a university. That's fantastic. And as mentioned, presently visiting professor at Clark in Worcester, Mass., uh, he was a member of the drafting team of the Islamic Declaration for Global Climate Change and uh, also a member of the Environment, Religion and Culture in the context of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, published by UNEP. He is also a core member of the draft team of Al-Mizan, a covenant for the Earth document, which will be presented to the United Nations. Uh, Professor Ozdemir's research interests include normative ethics, value theory, environmental ethics, environment and religion, interfaith dialogue, practical ethics, philosophical counseling, critical thinking, and Islamic philosophy. He has been teaching philosophical counseling since 2016 at Uskodar University at both undergraduate and graduate levels, and has given lectures and courses as a visiting professor at Harvard, University, Hartford University, Hartford Seminary, and Abo Academy University in Turku, Finland. His books include Care of Creation, an Islamic Perspective, Rumi and Confucius on the Meaning of Life, The Ethical Dimension of Human Attitude Toward Nature, and uh, Globalization, Ethics, and Islam. He has published many articles and translated many texts on philosophical counseling into Turkish, about which we're going to ask you more soon. So, Professor, thank you so much and welcome to the Agora. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here, to be with you. Uh, good afternoon to all. May we may we be a bit informal and and call you Ibrahim? We're you know very informal in the United States. Would that be okay? Sure, sure. Okay, so let's let's be friendly on a. On a I, I, I will not I will not be offended like uh, Sigmund Freud, who was also at Clark University in uh, ninety nine, <laughs> when they called him <laughs> Freud. He was. Very, very offended, you know, he said, you can, you must call me Dr. Freud. <laughs> yeah, well, because no he was problem. a neurologist, right? I mean, he wasn't a professor and he never won a Nobel Prize, and you know, all of that. So he was probably thin skinned. But uh, we welcome you under any any title you wish to be known as. But we, we're, we're in America. So let's be call me Lou and I'll call you Ibrahim and we'll hope the others follow suit. May I ask you before we open the mic and, uh, you know, this is a public event. Uh, we have mostly I see APPA members and uh, but guests are also welcome. Anyone with an interest in philosophical practices, welcome to these events. Could you tell us, at the, go back, let's go back a bit to get acquainted with you. Um, what was your initial work in philosophy? What drew you to philosophy? And what was your initial doctoral work about? Please acquaint us with that. And uh, that's a very good question, because when I go to my childhood, I, I am a village boy. I, I was born in a village uh, at the Syrian border of southeast of Turkey. We taught a school and we taught a mosque. We taught any book in the in this in, in the village. So I had to uh, go every day two miles to next uh, for school to next village. You know, then you know, as a village boy, I I, I just uh, I just understand the importance of education, how it cannot to change my life because I was the last one of eight uh, member of the, my family. You were eight brothers and sisters. I can uh, I, I saw very clearly everything is dependent on my education. So even I dared to go to to a high boarding high school when I was 13 years old. It was difficult for me, <clears throat> and it was a religious uh, high school, you know. <clears throat> uh, 
after that, um, I I went to uh, Ankara uh, the, uh, University, uh, you know, Department of uh, Theology for uh, my religious studies. And <clears throat> I, for five years, I, I studied there, especially Islamic thought and Islamic philosophy. But after that, I don't know why, maybe with the impact of my colleagues, my, my professors at uh, Divinity School, I went to Middle East Technical University for graduate studies. <clears throat> and I was the first one who accepted as a graduate student at that university. Before me, only a colleague was just has uh, his uh, MA there. Then I bought, uh, I, I did my uh, master and PhD, which cost me 11 years. <clears throat> but you know, uh, they asked me why, 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 why did you come here for uh, philosophy? Why you are not going to? Uh, there was some other divinity schools or uh, theology schools. I never forget. Uh, you know, uh, my professor was a Turkish Jew, Theo Gürümberg, Professor Theo Gürümberg. I said, sir, I just came here to to look at all my background with a critical eye. I never imagined. In the future, I'm gonna to teach uh, critical thinking in Turkey, maybe as one of uh, as one of the first philo uh, philosopher. But then he liked my answer. I started. I embarked to, to study philosophy, but it was a department just like in 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 the U.S. or the U.K. It was an analytical philosophy. But I insisted with the reading some. You know, uh, I I don't know maybe. As I said, I, as a village where always has an interest about the environment, what's happening to the environment, environmental problems. I began to read uh, Carolan Mergent, The Death of Nature, The Silent Syndrome of Rachel Carson, and also other leading American <laughs> pioneers of uh, environment thinking and Arna Ness, the ecology movement in, in, in Norway. Then I convinced my professor to write a PhD on environmental problems, the root, the root of... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> yes. Then I finished my studies. Then I just, you know, I am amazed with the interest in my work because it, the first uh, international uh, uh, invitation was from Harvard University in, in 1998. They organized a big event about uh, religions and ecology. 11 conferences just took uh, two years and in Islam and ecology uh, conference I present my paper which was just took six months to study on and I tested my views I tested my perception of environment how I understand the Muslim environment uh, to the to, 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 to the colleagues I am very you know I am very you know was satisfied with the Professor Said Hussein Nasser, which is godfather of Islamic environmentalism, who, 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 who has a PhD from Harvard University back in the 60s, he, was, he said very good things about uh, my uh, presentation, my arguments, and, and he told me to go further. Then later on, I, I began to, it's done upon me to understand, you know, the, 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 how it is related to the, uh, to the well-being of uh, a human being. The, the, a better relation with the nature and also with, with the environment has spiritual and also physical uh, uh, aspects for our well-being. Then I started, you know, in uh, when I retired from Hassan Kalyanji University, I started uh, Iskidar University. I just I I just saw your book uh, uh, on the market. It is very well read in Turkey. Then uh, Pierre Hado book about uh, you know philosophy uh, philosophy as a way of life. I said, oh my gosh, I should teach this in my class. But we have a very bureaucratic system in Turkey, you know, about the Council of Higher Education, and you have to convince the Senate of the University. That first I I convinced the Senate of University, but we started as a you know uh, elective course, but then. With the attract, with the with, with, with how students is attracted and pleased with the with, with the, my course. No, we have a uh, also we are giving a, at the graduate level. So uh, uh, in by the time we have some other colleagues, they have no giving in other universities. So this 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 is just start like this way, 
I just started with with your books and then with uh, Pierre Hado, then with uh, Lydia and others. You know, I I I almost you know I have all uh, literature in my library about the uh, environment in philosophical counseling. Well, that that's a fantastic background. Uh, but let's back up a little bit before we get to the philosophical counseling. So your English is excellent. You've been many times to the States. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And you, you've, you've been a visiting professor and you've lectured here. So yeah. uh, th this unfolded uh, on a regular basis for you? You know, it, in uh, after Harvard conference, I, uh, I I got invitation from many places. Then after 9-11, even I was, you know, I said, I I. I, I uh, I, I don't uh, forget. I sent a message to my all colleagues uh, in America, uh, even President Mr. Bush. I said, "Just I am admired the firefighters of New York City. They dare to the fire. They dare to this building. They know they will not come back at the end of the day. But they say we have to dare." I said, "So as a Muslim environmentalist, I I I I am." Uh, I saw myself in the same situation. There are many problems in the Muslim world, the economic problems, educational problems, cultural problems. So I dare to try to my best to solve them, to be part, to be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. That's and then, what we said in the 60s. I, 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 can, I, can, I can't do this be, without interfaith or in a dialogue with, the, with my colleagues who has a different perspective than me. Because as an environmentalist, I appreciate and understand the, what the biodiversity means uh, in the nature. In the same token, I also believe in the, uh, you know, uh, the diversity of uh, views, diversity of philosophies and worldviews, and how they can enrich my perspective, even to look my tradition from a new perspective. And this is why I, I invited to Hartford Seminary, also Hartford University, for almost three years. One, uh, one term in Turkey, one term here as a visiting scholar. And since then, I am coming and going, uh, you know, uh, to America. Well, th this is fantastic narrative. And you, you've always had uh, clearly this interest in environmentalism and in ecological ethics. And you must have been in a minority in Turkey. And perhaps you're still in a minority in Turkey. Is there, my question to you, is there, uh, are there clear connections between environmental philosophy in a contemporary sense and Islamic philosophy? Have you been have you been able to build bridges? Yes, that's very good question. But the problem with the, is is still the nation state mentality of nineteenth century or early twentieth century still is with us. I mean, the education is structured, the, the curricula is structured with the mental uh, nation state mentality. So. Everything is is expected from state state to be done. So I came to the I came to the conclusion then environmental consciousness, environmental activism, and democracies go hand in hand. If there is no democracy, there is no environmentalism. Because in many parts of the world, I visited from Morocco to Jakarta, from you know many Muslim countries. You know there is no the the, the state is polluter. The state is the source of the problem. So there is no space for the for, for the NGOs, you know, to 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 have uh, to to do something. So I, I I understood very well. We have to also work for democracy. As a part of environmentalism, we have to respect different perspectives, different views, different worldviews. We have to accommodate the the, the rights of minorities, or also the perspectives of in minorities. You see, so all this, uh, 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 you know, at the end of the day. I saw, yes, yes, you are right, that still we are in Turkey and some other Muslim countries. We environmentalists, we have to express ourselves very well. Uh, it's uh, very well. Uh, it's so we are not, uh, you know, uh, to prevent ourselves from the, uh, the, 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 the attack of the state and bureaucracy. So have you, have you then uh, uh, experienced opposition from more traditional academics uh, or indeed from, from government bureaucrats? You know, uh, my late professor, my late uh, professor just passed, uh, you know, he passed away two years ago. He just, you know, Ibrahim, this is, you are uh, wasting your energy. You are brilliant mind. Why you are not studying uh, Avaros, Ibn Sina, Plato, Descartes? What is this environmentalism and environmental policy? It is, it is just, you know, it is at current, it just a few years uh, later, it got, there will be no any environmental <laughs> talk and philosophy. Yeah. But yeah. When, when he saw, 
I am invited by uh, late Mr. Gorbachev to, 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 to France to present the Islamic perspective on environment, how we can solve environmental problems, how we can uh, uh, address the challenge of poverty, inequality in our societies back in 2001. And then I also uh, I am invited to, give, to, 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 to attend a meeting in Cape Town and I met Mr. Mandela, uh, Nelson Mandela, and he he gave an excellent talk to us as an environmentalist, you see. You see? And also they made a special tour for us to visit his prison, uh, his uh, you know cell in on Ro Robben Island, 12 miles uh, outside of the Cape Town at the heart of the ocean. So this professor was very honest. He apologized to me. He said, Ibrahim, I am very sorry. I told you not to study environmental philosophy and anything environmental, but you proved that this. It is a very vital uh, issue. It concerns not only me and also you have a concern for my uh, grandchildren. At that time, many philosophers think like that. Still, some of them, also it is true when I know I am talking, you know, I am giving a course on uh, philosophical counseling. They say, Ibrahim, you are like uh, uh, some sophist. You are, you, are making, you are selling philosophy. I said, I, I just feel sorry to hear that, you know. You know, I know many of us, you know, we just give this for free, we, especially after the devastating earthquake, which hit my own, own, own hometown. You know, I am just, you know, I am helping them for free. Well, we're, our condolences about that. And we, yes. we are mindful that you lost uh, also family members in that earthquake. Yes. Were yes. you were you and you were still in Massachusetts? Did you do philosophical counseling online with some of the villagers? And yes. Some of the, yes. Yes. Yes, I also I, about I, that experience. I am still providing philosophical counseling, but unfortunately, I am happy to do that. But I am sorry. I think I am the only one doing in this way. They are psychologists, they are psychiatrists. I also organized the psychologist, the Turkish speaking psychologist in 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 Netherlands to to provide the online courses because I have I have students there and also in Germany. But there is a lot of you know uh, philosophers in Turkish academia. They can be very, very useful if they share, but they still, they live in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, ivory towers. They say, our place is academia. We are philosophers. We, we, we should talk our class. We should write in academic journals, etc. But, you know, we have to, we have to, like Socrates, as you, at the name of this program, is in, we have to step in Agora, talk to the people, listen to them. First of all, you know, what is more important, believe me, is not uh, what I am telling to these uh, earthquake victims. What is important, they say, thank you for listening to us, to sharing our pain. But nobody is listening. They just sent, uh, you know, uh, they said, no, there's a lot of uh, help, you know, donation, they, they economic, you know, uh, you know, a uh, lot of uh, things have done. But nobody is listening to them. Only there's, there's I know, there's some uh, psychologists, also psychiatrists and etc. But you know, this is not a, 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 a matter medical doctors can do. They medical doctors, I know them. They they, they just like firefighters of New York City in in 9/11. They are doing best. I saw. I I know some of them. They 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 didn't sleep for days to survive a life. But no, as Socrates say, no, we have to address their souls. We have to touch their souls. We have to listen to them. We have to let them to feel. I am important. Somebody cares for me. I know many people say, you're in the U.S., you are still thinking of us. I said, yes. How I can help you? Well, you're, you're a pioneer, uh, which means automatically you're going to encounter resistance. We've seen this in many countries, and not, not only Islamic countries, but any country where a philosopher tries to step out of the ivory tower and render helpful services, you know that the there will be reactionary pushback from within the academy and maybe also resistance from some psychologists, not all, but from some. So you're a courageous man, Ibrahim, for, for, for you know taking on this mission and also a visionary. So do you see uh, potential then for the growth of philosophical practice in Turkey? Yes. A Tell lot. us about that. A lot. No, there are another universities providing also, uh, you know, graduate studies. They are opening new courses. They are now organizing, uh, uh, organizing new courses. 
Also, you know, we also have some psychologists. They say they just change their mind. They began to 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 you know to own up to open up to the public, and through NGOs, through you know workshops, etc. But not it is not a problem for for philosophers or also, also some other scholars. They they are just you know they are still they are they are living in in the idea of university of nineteenth century. They say. The, the, the university, the, the campus is our sanctuary. We have looked at them. In the past, you know, I know when one of our professors passed away, they bring uh, he or her, her, her body to the, as a respect to the university. Even they, they, they in the lost journey, they also come to the university. So, yes, it was, I said, you know, why we are not talking to the people? I just, you know, as a part of my life, I always have a connection with the lay people. I, I learned a lot of from them to sharpen my ideas, to just how to, for example, I, when I read your books and other, other colleagues' books, it is to the point, you know, not very, you know, philosophical games. People have problems. And with this, you know, what just also pushed me to be philosophical counselor, some of my students during my life, then when I reflect, they, uh, they, they ask me for help. Otherwise, later they told me, if you didn't help us, I was uh, decide I was going to end my life. Even you know, I just uh, uh, I read uh, an interview of uh, a colleague from uh, 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 an American university. He, he he said, you know, if it, I didn't I didn't read Kierkegaard, I will end up my life. Kierkegaard just uh, Kierkegaard saved my life. This is it means you know there is a lot of this using our philosophical background. Or philosophical tools, critical thinking tools, listening to people, as as you say, the, you just remember, you know, what Kant, Immanuel Kant says, you know, the, the human being is a so is, is so uh, you know valuable. It cannot be used for any uh, any means. You know, it cannot be used for any means. It is so sacred. It's so valuable. We have to make. We have to show this to the people. Their lives is uh, matters for us. Their lives, their problems matter for us. Yes, of course. And um, but you're not only are you a distinguished professor and a dean, moreover, but could you tell us more about this university that you founded? How did you manage to pull together the resources and the support to actually found a university? That's a fantastic accomplishment. Yes. When I went back to Turkey in 2003. They appointed me as a director general at the Ministry of Education at the Department of International Relations. It means I was the person who represent Turkey because Turkey is a member of OECD, EU, European Council, and all Western institutions. I represented the Ministry of Education there because they say Ibrahim, no, Ibrahim's language, uh, English is good. He knows America. He knows the world. So it is good to, to have him on, uh, on the board. And I served as a seven as a director general for seven years, and I attended a lot of meetings in in European countries and also uh, 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 from Australia uh, to, to to Russia on education. And then I I, I saw the pro whole prop what is the problem of education in the world. So then I stayed two years in 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 Finland as a visiting scholar, and I also studied the Finnish culture and also education system, but. After that, they say they ask me. Uh, after seven years, uh, they say uh, there is a new university, a private, if you say foundation university, non-profit university, going to be established in the southeast of Turkey, the first university in the region, private university. There is a state university, and I say I dare to accept this because it is my hometown. And <laughs> but some of my colleagues told me if you are un unsuccessful. You gonna not come to visit to this city. It will it, it will be a failure for you. You see, you you will lose everything. It's like a gambling. But I always have a positive side in my in, in my heart. I said I will try my best. I I really at because I at that time I know the American universities, I know the, the European universities. Then I but I couldn't find the faculty because people from professors from Istanbul, from Ankara, from big city. They are not willing to come to, you know, uh, 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 a far city in the south uh, of uh, Turkey, which is populated by Turks, Arabs, also Kurds, and also many nationalities, many minority groups there. You know, 
but uh, I dare to accept this and I work uh, day and night and I just, you know, I, because I am glad, you know, I, I, I put, uh, you know, I, uh, as a part of uh, curricula, all students, they have to study introduction to philosophy. What is philosophy? What is thinking? You see, what is the philosophical heritage, heritage of humanity means for us? We are not just, you know, uh, the university is not a place to find job for people. We, we have to help them to, to find, first of all, to their soul, their identity with the tools of philosophy, critical thinking. Then, uh, fortunately, it was very successful. And uh, Karen Armstrong, the author of The History of God, and helped me a lot because I know her when I was at Harvard uh, Seminary and uh, her in initiative, the compassion, the, 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 the compassion, the Society for Compassion. Uh, and uh, we made a joint event in Gaziantep where I, my university based. And, you know, we said, I, uh, I, I made it very clear that one, uh, you know, mission of a university is to solve social problems. Just after that, we have the refugee uh, flow from the Syria in two, two, 2011, March 2011. And I was the first president who visited the, these camps. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I asked a lady just arrived this night uh, to the camp. I said, what do you think? She said, when I will go, when we gonna to uh, back to home. I just said something is maybe soon, etc. I said, my son, it seems you are a very important person. Because I was in suit, there was my my driver. There's some people with me as a, as a, as a president of university. She asked me, uh, you know, give me specific days: one week, one month, one year. When I gonna to go home? I said, is there something important you you left behind? And for the first time, I understood the other dimensions of the refugees. She said, my donkey. My cows, my animals, my 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 chickens—they are all in the in, in in my village. They are waiting for me. If I don't go back, they will they will perish. Then I, even I didn't uh, uh, it, still my uh, refrigerator is working. You see, because they assume they will go back soon, but now it is almost you know more than ten years. They are still with us. So I I I just. I, I opened my campus for Syrian students and also for Syrian scholars. For, I, at first, I recruited Syrian scholars, professors to teach at my university, and I accepted their degree. Then the president, the the the, 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 the prime minister of at that time of the president, Mr. Erdogan, he at that time he gave full support to me. He said, "You you also have to uh, solve the uh, you know uh, provide education, education a basic human right." You see, if we not provided them, these children are going to be a problem for the society in future. Well, so so very, I am very satisfied. After four years, I retired as a president of university. Now, this university is still is, it is one of the uh, leading universities in the region, a signing shine, a, a, a shining star, signing star, more than 10,000 students. Yes, I'm uh, glad, you know, now when I visit my hometown, I just passed by the university. I just say, all these trees is uh, it is planted by me. They have a very good, you know, uh, campus. Uh, see, we uh, I organized a lot of, uh, you know, I assigned every student to plant a tree. When they step in the campus, I said you have to plant a tree. When you you are alumni, you will say I have a tree there. That's just wonderful. You, as we say in the U.S., you really walk the walk. You you don't just talk the talk, but you really apply your values to help a lot of people. And that's really commendable. May I ask you a couple of more questions before we open the mic? We have a very interesting gathering today, and I'm sure some of our colleagues would love to interact with you. So let me just ask you a couple more questions and then we'll open the floor. First of all, I'm intrigued by your book on Rumi and Confucius. I mean, we love Rumi, yeah. you know, but Confucius is very strict uh, you know, extremely etiquette oriented, at least the schools that evolved from him are, are, are extremely strict and confused. And Rumi is, uh, Rumi is, uh, is untamable. He's a wild man in some ways and in a good way. So how do you, what is the similarity? Give us a, a synopsis of, of the connection between Rumi and Confucius. It's fascinating. 
Uh, this is a very good question. You know, when I was uh, in Chicago in uh, 1999 for a conference, and I just my my book published on environment, uh, the ethical dimension of environment published, and I have a quotation there from Rumi in that book. Then when I uh, visited uh, the borders, the, the the huge bookstores of that time, I am uh, I am uh, I am amazed with the books on Rumi. Then uh, somebody tell me, can you talk, uh, give a talk on Rumi's perception of nature and environment at the UN? I said, you know, at that time, as I mean, I'm still a young scholar. I said, yo, yo I don't, uh, how can I do that? You know, it is the UN. I said, don't worry. Just, just summarize what you have, uh, you have done in your book. Then he arranged a meeting. I don't forget. It is December 4th, uh, 1999. I went. I couldn't find even a ticket because it was a Christmas time, and so I rented a car from the Chicago all the way to 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 to, to New York City with a friend, and I gave this talk, and it opened a new avenues for me. Many people they said it is. You see, there was a, a Shinto uh, scholar. He 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 said, you know, I am also a lover of Rumi. Then. They invited me, give, uh, me to, to, to give a lecture at uh, uh, South Korea uh, as a conference by Asian Philosophical uh, Association. You know, they say, uh, can you give a lecture on Rumi? I said, OK, I also I, I can give a lecture on Rumi, but let me uh, compare and contrast what is uh, the commonality between Rumi and Confucius, the master. Then. I, I began to read uh, Rumi because when I was at Harvard as a visiting scholar back uh, in 98, I met one of the best uh, Confucian scholars, uh, to, uh, to Professor Tu Wimberg. At, at, he, he was at Harvard. Also, Mary Evelyn Tucker, she's also an expert on uh, Confucius. Uh, they helped me. And this is, uh, I presented my paper at uh, in Korea, so, so South Korea. And it is so welcomed. Then many Buddhist people, Shinto people, Taoist people, they say, please just, you know, develop this to a book. We don't know anything about Rumi. We never happened there. With the because I say, I started like this, both of them, they are great sons of the East. No, they are, have wisdom. They have some, sh they, they are, have wisdom sharing with the West. No, the biggest scholar of Rumi and and on Confucius, they are, they live in the U.S. or in 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 the West. So, because in my country, you know, Rumi belongs to some you know 13th century. It is, belongs to the history. Until recently, the studies on Rumi was very limited. The studies in the West changed our perception of Rumi. You see, Th therefore, you know, now we have a lot of studies on 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 Rumi, and uh, I never forgot. You know, when I was at Hartford Seminary during the Christmas, I went to the uh, a village, a Shakers Village on uh, in, in Mount Lebanon, in in, in uh, on my way to Albany. We lost our way in the in the forest. Then we 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 we, uh, we, we found a village, and there was a bookstore. And when I uh, it said it's open, I entered, and it was a Sufi music, and there was a, a roomy corner at this bookstore. Then I saw, I said, I greeted the owner of the book with the Islamic greeting. I said, Salam Alaikum. She said, why? I said, Merhaba. She said, what are you saying? Then I turned to the BBC or CNN channel. I said, sir, I suppose you are Muslim because you are listening to Rumi music and you have a corner on Rumi, for Rumi books and cassettes at that time. And he said something I never forgot. He said, sir, Rumi is so great. You cannot confine him in your national borders. It is so big; it must, it must, it it, it belongs to all of us. Mevlana means our master. He is also our master. Here we are. Have, we have a reading circle, uh, room reading circle. Then I discovered one day I listened on NPR when I was in the U.S. to Mary Oliver, the late uh, poet, and this lady said. She, she said, I have a terrible childhood, but Rumi saved my life. This is also very important for us as a philosophical counselors to benefit from the poetry, to, to the spirituality, to the, to the Sufi teachings. 
And the interviewer asked, uh, uh, Christie asked, how uh, a poet from 13th century can help you marry? She replied, I never forget, say, Rumi taught me to kiss the ground and provided me 100 reasons. <laughs> he just presented me a new perception of the world. Then I, 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 I saw the same thing, for, listening to the same thing from Joanne Macy, who is now 94 years old. She said, why I discovered Buddha, Buddhism, I, it, the Buddha, you know, uh, helped me to, to listen to the cry of the earth. This is why I, I converted to become as a deep ecologist, ec ecology, ecologist in, in, the, in the U.S., so, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me summarize Rumi and all other great uh, uh, men of wisdom and Confucius then provide us to look at nature from a totally different perspective. They can help us with their wisdom to come up with new answers, not just repeating them, because Rumi also teaches us, you know, you should not look at the past, uh, look at the past as sto stoic philosophers tell us, just Focus on the future. And each day is a new opportunity for you. To try to solve your problems. Okay? Sure. That, that's, that's tremendous. Before I open the mic, one more question, please. Um, you have so much uh, work uh, done in so many fields, uh, and yet you have found time and, and made uh, the effort to translate, as you earlier told us, works by philosophical practitioners into Turkish. I gather that you have translated several uh, lectures, essays, interviews, all kinds of things. So tell us about your translation project to introduce Western yeah. philosophical counselors into Turkish culture. Yeah, Lou, I, I found out, you know, in Turkey people, they, they know you from through your, your, your books. But I, you have, then I found out you have a very beautiful interviews. You summarize your book in the interview. You summarize your whole philosophy in the interview. Also, uh, Massimo, on, I, I, I began then, I began to uh, translate interviews and short articles, which is not translated into Turkish. For example, I translated almost all your interviews. And also, uh, Irvin Yalom's interviews, which is not translated into Turkish. Rollo May interviews. I just found two or three of Rollo May interview, he summarizes all his existential psychology, existential approach very well. Before just, you know, it is one of his, the last interview. So, uh, I, I, inter I also, uh, John Kabat-Zinn's interviews on mindfulness. Even, you know, when I read uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, oh my gosh, this man is saved by Philosophy in the in the exile in the gulag uh, in the gulag uh, archipelago, and he says, you know, one day I just look at the sky, I look at the clouds, I look at the nature from a totally different perspective. As I am a part of nature, then everything is changed. Then I said, oh, thanks God, I am here. Otherwise, I will not discover myself. Just like Bioetti you knows the, the counseling of philosophy, he just says, you know, he just, uh, you, I, you can see, I also uh, uh, translated this, his uh, interviews uh, on the meaning of life. And also, uh, uh, I uh, translated two uh, interviews of Ma with Oli uh, Ma Mary Oliver, the poet, and also in, uh, translated Lydia Amir's uh, interviews and also. Shalomit uh, Shoster and uh, Maria Davanza Tilimnas and Ran Lahav and Shanti Jonas. I just, I listened to her uh, last week, you know, I just, uh, you know, she has an excellent interview. So uh, I shared with my graduate students this. They are amazed, they are enriched. One of them is wrote an, in Turkish an excellent uh, essay on you, for example, reading your interviews and your books. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, she summarized your uh, your your works, you know, in in fifteen pages. So no, it's gonna be published in, in the form of a book, and it's also some of them. It is it will be uh, available on the internet for free because my aim is to introduce you to the Turkish public. It is not 
only a problem is because the environmental pro the, the problem the the, the 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 anxiety especially uh, with the covid 19 after covid 19 still there there are people have a lot of problems they are looking for some new answers they, they are they, 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 especially in Turkey there it is difficult to convince them to, to see to, to see a psychologist they say I'm not sick I am not mentally I don't have mental problems but many people who came to me I first First thing first, I say, you are not sick. You are a normal person. You know, even I appreciate you. You are asking the questions. Uh, Socrates asked, Plato asked, Descartes asked, Kant asked. This is good. You are asking these questions about the Odyssey, about the meaning of life. Oh, they then began, oh, oh, I am okay. Yeah, we are okay. But let's, let's me listen to question. Then let me provide you what philosophers would uh, advise to share with you, then you will come up with your solution. I will not impose you my own philosophy, my own ideology, my own faith. This belongs to me. You have to find your own way in an existential way. Uh, that's, that's a very, very commendable project. If you keep translating our interviews and papers, we could stop writing at some point. We won't have to write anymore if your yeah. students are summarizing us. But seriously, I think that you're a great pioneer, Ibrahim, and that uh, certainly the movement of philosophical practice owes you a great debt for what you're doing in Turkey. And I think that Turkish culture also will one day recognize the importance of your position, which most of us share that people who question when, especially when things like pandemics happen, they're not mentally ill, uh, yeah. but they are questioning. And it's only philosophers who can give them a way to dialogue meaningfully instead of diagnosing them. So um, we share that view and you're doing tremendous work. We are really indebted to you. I'd like to open the mic now. We have some some great colleagues in the room with us. And uh, if you don't mind, we'll give them a chance to interact with you. We have some Scandinavians who are telling us that it's midsummer. They're reminding us it's midsummer. And uh, uh, Pia Huni from Finland uh, tells, tells us in the chat room about Nimet Kik who's a uh, um, uh, living in Istanbul and did training in Socratic dialogue in Germany. So maybe you'll get to uh, to meet her or to know her. Pia, if you can put her email in the chat yeah. room, if you're still with us, maybe we can uh, you did, know, chat with Ibrahim. I really appreciate that. You know, uh, let me say, Pia, I was for two years. I can, uh, I I can was... open my mic as well. Yes, yes. Go yes, on, yes, go on, go on yeah, You can also go turn on your uh, video on. camera too, yeah. Oh, do you want to do you want to sleep? Do you want to see my sleeping dress? No, well, but I miss to, you. But, but I was I was uh, in uh, Abu Academy okay, for okay. two, two Ooh, years. Oh my God! Very yeah. shortly. <laughs> I was at Abu Academy for two years. I missed the summer because it's summer late there. night in in Finland. Sorry, it's very late night. Yes, I appreciate uh, Pia. I will uh, if you send me Nimet's. Uh, 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 email, I will contact her because in Turkey still the academia has kept the distance with the philosophical counseling. Still cannot, we have very good philosophers, they can help people, but they are still they are talking at the workshops, at panels, at symposiums where nobody, yeah. knows, young people, they are not attend these meetings. Yeah. You have to find because... a new way to, to, reach, to reach young people, yeah. Yes. Me and Mimet we met a very many, many years ago uh, for a reason that we both participating about this very destructive Socratic dialogue method. We learn it about this. First, we starting in Cambridge, uh, UK, and then we moved to Germany. And because the, this COVID came, it takes a little bit longer than we plan it first. But in any case, it's very destructive method, uh, Nelson Heckman tradition. How you're doing the Socratic dialogue, it's very beautiful. But end of the day, what I want to really ask you is something that... Uh, I'm so sorry, but I have a feeling that the uh, people religions and the philosophical ideas is going 
I don't know, the rolling together. When I participated in the Romania two weeks ago, this our international conference, I was a little bit surprised that everybody wants to doing something for Buddha and the Asian philosophies. And in my presentation, I was following about what I'm learning from Dalai Lama when he say to us, for example, that maybe you have to learn first your own religion tradition enough. And if you're thinking about that this is not enough for me, then you can maybe go forward. But I think the Western people have this kind of like a thirsty, you know, yeah. the inner thirsty to go on forward to looking for something uh, for religions, meditations, all these kind of things which solve their problems. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. In fact, you know, I I, 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 I hear this in person from uh, His Highness Dalai Lama in Cape Town. We have a lunch with him. Of course, the mayor of Cape Town was there, a lady, and also there was other uh, uh, many people. And I never forget, you know, a journalist from U.S. asked about the broken families. Said, His Highness, what do you think about the broken families? We have a big problem. He says, it doesn't make any sense to me. I have no idea about the broken families. She repeated her question again. She said, ma'am, I am a single man. I am not married. So I don't understand why people is fighting, why fighting or why they are broken. I don't understand this. I, you know. Uh, but he said, what is the best thing in your life you are you are best? And he said, I am a good watch uh, repairer. I have a hobby in repairing watch. I have a collection of watch. I am a good at that one. Then he said the same thing as you repeated. He said, it is time to learn from each other without imposing our ideology or our faith on others. First, to listen to others and enlarge our, our perspective in reach or perspective and there's a for example we just we in some meetings in interfaith missy we identified some common problems it is inequality is poverty it is racism it is ter international terrorism domestic terrorism it is the the, the 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 plight of the woman in many societies so how we can be a part of solution how we can uh, cooperate to solve this problem Okay, thank you very much, Pia. It's great to see you, and thank you for staying up so late in Finland. It was wonderful seeing you in Romania, too. You're you're getting back into things, and that's terrific. So we'll look forward to our next meeting. Would Would anyone else like to interact with uh, with uh, Ibrahim? Do we have uh, uh, we have this great opportunity? Does anyone have a question for him? Please uh, please put up your hand, Rick. Go ahead on on and go ahead, Rick. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Yeah, thank you. Likewise. Uh, great presentation. Really fascinating um, life that you've had there, Ibrahim. Um, I'm going to ask you a question about your scholarly work, which is on environmentalism. I'm curious to have the opinion of an expert who's a philosopher uh, with your kind of philosophical acumen to just kind of uh, weigh in on the issue of climate change, which is very politicized. Yeah. I'm curious to hear just a kind of What's your position on this? Uh, are we all doomed in five years and we have to completely change everything? Or is that a little bit exaggerated? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I know this is a very difficult topic. Yeah, you this know. Is, uh, up your alley, no? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, you know, still I have connection with my relatives, my people. And just two days ago, one of my relatives, because of the eight hours difference, he sent me a message, uh, you know, said, you know, uh, 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 you know, Uncle Ibrahim, they call me Uncle Ibrahim. Uncle Ibrahim, there's, we have to call you. There's an urgent problem. Then I said, okay. I called them. They say, my son, 18 years old, is diagnosed with cancer. Then all families just, you know, dem you know, demoralized. They don't know what, they say, we will send, sell everything we, uh, we owe to just save our son's life. I said, be, you know, I, I just said, I first, first, I am sorry to hear that. Don't worry. I will help you in full capacity. If it is 
it if it, it it be treated very well, even I will try to bring him to the to, to, to the US. But I said, but no panic. Then I took one of the best colleague, you know, oncologist in Istanbul, and he just advised us that uh, a, a person who can treat him most probably 100 percent to the point solution. But no, when we, we study the when we look at the, 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 the data, scientific data presented to us by uh, IPCC, International Panel for Climate Change, which is a body of the UN. Yes, and when we look at some people, it is like like Titanic. They are enjoying their party, but the the the, the, the ship is sinking. But at least we are just saying, you know, that we have problems. If we change, or it, it was evident through uh, during the COVID, you know, there was a lot of things is changed in the nature. We, for the first time, we see dolphins in the Bosphorus, uh, 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 Bosphorus, you know, for for after many years, uh, migrating birds. You know, it. I think it helped us to understand we are a part of the nature. What happens to nature in return? It is we also uh, uh, affected by this. Still, you know, uh, the um, uh, Kate uh, Wartrop from Oxford University. She she is no she she proposed a sustain sustainable economic system. She calls it donut uh, economy. Why? After she got his PhD, her PhD in Oxford. She went to Zanzibar. She lived barefoot for three years in Zanzibar with the local communities. Then she came back to uh, to Oxford, but with a theory, with a project, which can uh, you know uh, has uh, she can, because she says this economic system of the 19th century is not sustainable. So I think if we just uh, you know we we began to change our uh, perception of ourselves and our or, or uh, consumption patterns, and we, 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 uh, we, if we can develop more friendly interaction with the nature, with the uh, uh, animal world, because every day many animals are uh, becoming extinct. This is a reality. I am, I am still hopeful. I am still hopeful. Yeah, to, but at least we have to do something. But this way, it is not sustainable anymore, and we will have more uh, climate refugees in the future. Okay, but thank you. Just, 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 this just, is last week, just, just last week, that last word, just last week, a team of uh, scholars was working about the refugee crisis from the uh, Sahara region to the Europe. Uh, three ladies, uh, you know, one is from Mexico, one is from the US, and the other one from the Netherlands, and one from Spain. They asked me about what do you think about the refugee problem, and it was before this. Uh, tragic events of uh, you know uh, you know in in Mediterranean Sea with you know hundreds of refugees they lost their lives. I said we have to help these people in their place. And the first thing, just like the uh, philosophical counseling, the first thing we have to listen to them. We have to solve their problems. We make them sure they matters for us. But we can help them through many things. We can we can help with their educational system. We can teach them some basic surviving life life skills, you know, but just ignoring ignoring them, it is not a part of the problem. Because I traveled in Morocco, I saw many people at the desert, they are walking all the, to, to the north. They are not listening to news, they are not, they are, have no idea what is waiting for them. But only thing they know, it, if they go, they move to the north, it's going to be good for them. And well. there, yeah, yeah. So I think it is. It is the the, the good thing is to help to help them uh, uh, in their country, in their place. Yeah. Yes, uh, we we've had refugees in the millions in the twentieth century, uh, mostly political refugees, uh, economic refugees. You know, Ibrahim, there have been people from Morocco coming to Europe for decades. Yeah. I met someone, I was in Morocco uh, 50 years ago, and I met Moroccans who wanted to go to Germany, who wanted to go to work. So they could send, in France, they could send money home, you know, to help sustain their families in Morocco because of the economic difference in wages. So the, these are not new stories. It's just that climate refugees are a new kind of refugee. But we have, in our human history, been migrating all over the planet since day one, and it's not going to stop. <laughs> But yeah. I do agree with you, and I think without getting too political, we do definitely need more economic development in the developing world. 
And the developed world obviously is being forced to change some of its means of production. So we'll see, but it's never going to stop. You know, this is in flux. We have a compatriot of yours with her yeah. hand up, uh, yeah. Felius Serdar, who says uh, that uh, she's a philosophical counselor with a master's yeah. degree from yeah. Maltepe University. Yeah. Please yeah. unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, if you're in the room, she uh, are you still in the room, Phyllis? Yes, we have I'm a program, here. Have a good program. Okay, please say hello to, to him and, and uh, let's yes. hear from you. Okay, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and then meet all <laughs> you and meet also with uh, Mr. Ibrahim. So um, actually, uh, I would like to ask, um, uh, I'm working with humanitarian uh, area uh, almost 10 years, more than 10 years, um, uh, like skills and capacity building um, counselor. Um, but whenever I try to uh, tell them all the problems will be solved with philosophical and uh, critical thinking uh, methodology and approach, um, I always uh, face the obstacle and um, with many um, Prejudice. Uh, so, specifically in Turkey, uh, is there any trick how we can um, tackle these uh, problems? Uh, how we can uh, uh, how we can explain the people? Uh, philosophy uh, is not uh, like a huge and um, like uh, sitting on the tower, but in the ground. I, because really, I am getting a uh, struggle about this. Uh, uh, you, you you have a lot of uh, experience, and uh, so is there any trick? And um, uh, even when I talk with NGOs and then UN and, and the World Bank, I'm working with them, but uh, they are uh, very uh, like uh, they don't. I, maybe I can explain, but uh, they are very. They have very struggle. Uh, no, they have very strict. I'm set mind setting about the philosophy. Um, what is the trick? How I can solve this problem? <laughs> uh, thank you, Feliz. This is a very good question. Uh, let me say in Turkish, teşekkür ederim. But I think also your the uh, pro, pro, Professor Iona Kuchuradi. She's a very well known, uh, uh, you know, uh, woman philosopher in Turkey with Greek origin. And, uh, you know, uh, also my road crosses with her. I organized it with her a uh, day of philosophy back in uh, 2007 in Istanbul, uh, at the heart of the Istanbul. You see, when I was uh, a bureaucrat in the Ministry of Education, I invited her to for, and some other philosophers. Hope we can make human rights, environmental rights as a part of curricula. Not uh, as an extra class, but as a as a, as, a, as a part of the, the soul of the education. And she has done, I think, a lot a very good jobs on the human rights uh, uh, issues and other problems. And, uh, and I think the first thing we have to, you know, we have very centralized educational system. Everything is decided in Ankara, in the, at the Ministry of Education. First of all, this is why I said, you know, to solve all problems, we have to also uh, uh, improve uh, the, 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 the spirit of democracy. We need, you know, the, as you see, we have many people like Phyllis and also like Nazif, some other scholars, as I said, many philosophers. But the system, the, the, when the system is very central, they don't ask you. They just, they try to uh, solve problems uh, for you. Uh, and for example, they, uh, they never ask the Syrian mothers, what do you expect us from us uh, and uh, to help you? And my daughter, uh, who has a uh, you know degree in so sociology, she wrote a thesis on that. I said, just study this situation. Just listen to the mothers, the refugee mothers, women. And she interviewed, in-depth interview, she made an inter in-depth interview uh, for, for 40 Syrian mothers. And the, the, the answer, the, 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 the conclusion is also uh, 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 as answer to your question, Phyllis. And they, they, they offered us so innovative, so creative ways how to help them. And but they say nobody from the government and from bureaucracy, they ask us what you are expecting from us. But they all say we are trying to help you. But first us ask us how to help me. I think yeah. if we ask with our society and also 
or professor or academic get out of the academia, talk with the mm-hmm. people in the spirit of the philosophical concept, just in the spirit of Socrates. And mm-hmm. uh, as uh, just, you know, when uh, you journey in the history of philosophy, you you just passed the 19th century, 18th century, all philosophers are part of life. They are, they are at the heart of the society. But if it the establishment of new universities, a new academic system, we just uh, lost all connection with the society. And I think the philosophical considering as a good way to just uh, 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 to go to the roots <laughs> and <laughs> learn from <laughs> our roots, yes. Uh, may I, uh, may I uh, jump in and say something? Yes, of course, Najif. Go ahead. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> So thanks for this nice talk, uh, Ibrahim Bey. Uh, so I really enjoyed uh, your experience and life story. Like Phyllis, can you introduce yourself just shortly? Me? Can, can you say something about you, Nazif? Where are oh, you, now, for it's example? Not, it's not necessary, but I yes, am now uh, as a visiting scholar at Harvard, uh, associate professor of philosophy from Turkey as well. Uh, and indeed, what I would like to add uh, in response to Philip's question might be relevant to the whole talk we are now uh, maybe finishing. Uh, as far as I understand, the question has a dimension about how to relate the most abstract type of philosophy to the real life, the concrete problems of real life. And I would like to refer to Dalai Lama here uh, about starting with your own tradition. Indeed, uh, the Turkish tra- tra- tradition is very rich in terms of, of folk tales and stories uh, and jokes. So in our culture, there is the figure called Nasreddin Hoca, whose jokes are very famous and known by everybody, uh, though the world uh, doesn't know much about it. So this, uh, my current study indeed is uh, to illuminate the philosophical aspects of these uh, jokes. And also, if you look at Rumi, he is telling us stories. Then he derives some lessons from those stories. The story is embedded in the concrete daily life. So uh, if you look at that stories from a deeper perspective, you can see the philosophical lessons you can uh, get from, uh, drive from these uh, stories. So uh, the project I have uh, continuing is to look at these traditional folk tales, stories, and jokes and drive philosophical dimensions and illuminate the philosophical aspects of these stories and relate philosophy to the, to the life and uh, specifically to the certain culture in which these you know uh, particular uh, things are shared and known by everybody. Maybe this may help uh, to, to answer the question as well. Very good contribution. Thank you, uh, Nazif. Thank you, Nazif. It's great to see you again. And thank you for joining us today. Would anyone else like to raise a question or a comment for for Ibrahim? We have some time remaining and we have, we have uh, wonderful practitioners in the room. Does anyone like to like to speak up? You're more than welcome to join us in the conversation. Everybody's very shy today. Rick, again, go ahead, Rick. Since nobody else offered, I'm I'm curious. Um, this has become a question recently um, that I've been asked and that others have raised. Do you have a particular method that you employ as a philosophical counselor? Yes, I just you know after I you know I um, as a um, as a uh, philosopher as uh, teaching philosophy at uh, my uh, students, I always just you know uh, was you know uh, make it very simple for them. I start with the Dostoevsky, I start with Tolstoy, I start with sometimes uh, uh, some other uh, uh, you know uh, men of letters. Then how the uh, philosophical implications that, uh, there. Then after reading, you know, the works of uh, Lou and you all my colleagues, then uh, I just uh, used, you know, first first things first. I said you are important for me. I am not 
gonna to teach you something new. I gonna to help you to discover something new. You will make a di discovery. It is up to you. We have it is a dialogue. So I just uh, I just so there when I say this, they are so uh, feel comfortable that then they trust you, they rely you, then they 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 talk with you. Then we are only just you know midwife, you know, just as Socrates says. And uh, then uh, as I also uh, used the uh, loose method of peace, you know, it is a five step about, and some other friends, they have three steps, four steps. I think uh, this way, I am also using it uh, as uh, Nazif uh, summarized very well, the teaching of Rumi, the teaching of Al-Kindi, the first, I think the first Muslim counselor, it is the, also first Muslim philosopher. Could you imagine in the ninth century, he wrote a book, uh, the spell of the sorrow in the society. Many political minded Muslims, they, they, they suppose if they have a Muslim government, if they have a Muslim leader in the power, they, they, he will solve all problems. But even there was a Khalifa, there was a Caliph in the, in the Baghdad, there was a Muslim rule, the Muslim society. The first Muslim philosopher is writing a book on the, uh, how to dispel sorrow in the spirit of Epicureanism. And, and, and he says we, we, should, we must not shy to learn from others, from other nations, from other religions, from other philosophers. Because as Muslims, we, are, we must be seekers of knowledge, seekers of wisdom. I just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm also uh, in this spirit, I'm talking with my clients and with, uh, with my students. And so far, what, uh, in, you know, uh, was uh, uh, good for me. Uh, I, as I said, few of my students, they say, you saved my life, sir. You didn't know that. Because sometimes, you know, just, you know, just solve a problem, just say you are important and listen to them and just talk about the possible solutions. You save a life. I, this, is, this is the biggest and noble part of, I think, philosophical counseling. Yeah. I don't, can, can I Okay. It, uh, thank you very much for that, Abraham. That's uh, that's quite a, a, an illuminating answer. Um, are are there any other hands that that uh, that want to go up? We have still people who haven't spoken today. I'm not going to call call on you by name, but we have some very experienced colleagues in the room, and this is a great chance. The iPhone, the iPhone in the chat says that they have a question. Oh, do they? Yes. Uh, uh, in the chat. Okay. Uh, hi. Can you, oh, can hi. You hear iPhone. Me? Not, yes. Can please you hear identify me? yourself. Yes. yes. Please go ahead. Yes. Okay. This is Sharon Al Coley. How are you? Thank you. Oh, well, good. Um, for someone who's not well uh, schooled in Islamic literature and would like to sort of introduce some of Islamic thought about philosophical counseling or environmentalism in a simple way to to um, freshmen, can you recommend any particular pieces of work? You mentioned something about how to overcome sorrow. Um, I'm just wondering if you could uh, maybe write to us about any specific articles that you might recommend. Sure. I, in fact, I have uh, my new book just uh, published in the UK about the uh, you know uh, care for creation and Islamic perspective. It is just you know. I, uh, in the same way, I presented this as a paper in Chicago, then in Maldives, as I used as a text there. And uh, the, the Minister of uh, Environment of Maldives Islands was there. And he said, he said, I, I want to make a confession. Uh, before listening to Professor Özdemir, I, I, I didn't know anything, anything about environment. Because I just assume it's, it, it is a bureaucratic uh, procedure, you know. You can make some laws, you can make some uh, bylaws, and you solve the problem. But I said, what is your spiritual connection with the coral reefs, which you inherited from your grandparents? What is your connection, spiritual connection with the ocean, with the uh, ocean ecology? And I, I, I based my arguments on the Islamic philosophy, Islamic text. And I said, you are, and we are also responsible first to understand the problem in the context then uh, in the in a uh, whole uh, you know uh, what we are gonna to, uh, gonna to do for the future generations if you write your email i can send you all these you know uh, things to you and i share with you this is why you know 
uh, I'm working on it, especially uh, the new document, as uh, Lou said, you know, we are working on a document which is uh, for more than three years. It is at the last stage, uh, Al Mizan, a covenant for the earth. It is like the uh, Laudata Si of Muslims. When, uh, okay, Pope great. Francis, when Pope Francis published, you know, declared the Laudata Si in tw tw 2015 in, 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 in Vatican, many people, they ask us why Muslims they are not don't have a uh, uh, declaration like that. <laughs> we said because we don't have a Pope. We have national leaders. So they don't agree. But fortunately, uh, a Muslim bureaucrat in the UN system, he he organized us and he, asked, he encouraged us and no, all document will be presented to the Muslim uh, ministers of environment, uh, which is, you know, uh, 57 ministers. After that, it will gonna to be pub uh, to, 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 to uh, submitted to the UN as an official document. But in during these three, year, three years, we consulted all major environmentalists, Muslims, non-Muslims. You know, we are surprised. One of the best feedbacks come from all Christians, friends or Buddhist friends. And so the document is not only uh, by us, it is, it, is, it is international document. It becomes an international document and almost it be, it, it be, be path-breaking document, uh, I hope, uh, for Muslim environmentalists and also a big contribution to the environmental literature in the world. Absolutely. I just put the title into the chat room, Ibrahim, yeah. so people yeah. can read it. But yeah. would you please, uh, whoever is speaking on the iPhone, whoever precipitated this thread, could you please tell us who you are? Put your name in the chat room if you don't mind. We'd like you to identify yourself. I appreciate her. You know, she's, you know, on her way. And just like uh, Carl Jasper says, philosophy is to be on the way. And she's listening to us. We appreciate that and asking very, asking very good questions. Yes. yes, but we'd still like to know. Sharon El Coley. Sharon, Sharon El Coley is her name. Sharon, yes. okay, sure, sure. We know you, Sharon. Uh, we've had contact with you. So thank you very much for that. And we'll be able to put you in touch with Ibrahim via email, okay? That's that's tremendous. Uh, any anyone else like to uh, like to ask a question or make a comment? Please, we have some time remaining. Patricia, unmute yourself, Patricia. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, because I'm not at home, so I'm in a convent on friars. Because today we had the National Italian Philosophical Council reunion meeting. So I'm using my cellular phone because there is no Wi-Fi here. So I'm not sure that you can hear me. Can you? Yes. 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 Patricia, okay. my publisher is an Italian based in oh. UK. <laughs> oh, that's very easy. And he lived so, in India for 15 years. He's a true <laughs> philosopher. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So thanks a lot, Ibrahim, because really I appreciate your, your talk, your uh, present, presentation. And I, I can learn a lot from you. And um, uh, especially uh, regarding the role of philosophy in the world, in the actual world. Because you have problems like environment, like our relation with... Uh, Patricia, I'm sorry, you're breaking up. So Patricia, your, your signal is breaking up. So oh, is it possible okay. for you to try and repeat your comments or enter in, in the chat room if you have that ability? Okay, okay. If you okay. turn your video off, that might help also if you turn Okay, I, I, okay. Okay. Um, can you hear me better? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, because it's my phone. Anyway, uh, I, I was telling um, Ibrahim that, of course, I appreciated a lot his presentation and uh, an enormous contribution. <laughs> but your phone is still on. We, we're still, your video is Me? interfering uh, with your audio. I, oh, but, oh, but I took off my video. Oh, oh, I don't know why. It doesn't work. It, it, I, I take it off. It's off now, but it's off now. Yeah, but and then it comes back anyway. Well, it's okay. off now. It's staying off. So continue. Okay. Staying off because it comes and go. Anyway, I was 
um, well, anyway, I, I started. And uh, I, I, I was meaning to tell Ibrahim that the role of philosophy in practice is to be connected to the real problem of the world. And now the problem of environment and issue about climate change that Juric mentioned, uh, about migration, and in, in a critical point also. I mean, our, our contribution shouldn't follow the mainstream. As philosopher, we have always to have a sort of critical thinking and, and, and an actual contribution, of course, not the problem, but to propose solution, as Ibrahim said. So I, 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 in a way, I agree about uh, what Ibrahim says, uh, for example, regarding migration, helping them economically in their own country. But if a, migra if a, if a migrant comes back, comes to us from a war, for example, uh, what can we, how can we as philosophers contribute to this? For example, we have wars all over the world, in Europe as well, in this moment. So what, what is our practical role regarding this problem? In, 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 of course, in, in an ideal, yes, we have to, uh, to let uh, other, uh, listen to our voice regarding the economics of developing countries. But on an actual problem like wars, how can we, uh, how can we give help in a, in a, in a practical way? First, first question to Hebron. Second question is regarding the method. I agree with him. I, I, I understood, if I correctly understood, that Hebron, when, when lectures, for example, when, when meets his students or, or his stakeholders or, 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 or patients or, 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 or clients or whatever, he uh, takes contribution from different kinds of fields, like literature, he quoted Dostoevsky, like politics, Solzhenitsyn, which, I, which is really a non-method, which, which I totally share, which I totally agree, not only from philosophy, he takes from religions, poetry, literature, politics, which is, which is in a way, it, it's, it's, well, it, it's very philosophically practical. It's practical. It's philosophically practical, and I agree totally. If I have correctly understood, so not not only from the history of philosophy, but from all the fields yeah. in a very transversal way. Yeah. Have I correctly understood, Ibrahim? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. But you remind me, uh, Professor Umberto, when I visited, you know, uh, Bologna. Uh, in 2000, uh, in, 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 in 2021, after the, my first visit after COVID-19. And I met a pipe repairer man, old man. Just it up, it, it, it you know, pop up in mind. Uh, Professor Umberto Eco was uh, a heavy pipe smoker. I said, sir, you must, yeah. you must probably know my friend Umberto. He said, who is Umberto? I said, he's a philosopher. Oh, he said this, my colleague Umberto, I said, I said, what do you think of him? He said something you can never find in other places. He told me, Umberto told me, my friend, I wrote a philosophical book nobody read, but I wrote a science fiction on the name of the rose. No, it translated all major languages. Then I am, I began to write science, you know, novels. Everybody's reading and everybody's getting my message. And he said something else. He said one day they invited him to a remote uh, town in, 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 in Italy uh, to, to give a talk at the uh, high school. And he looked look at his calendar. He said, OK, I will come on the uh, 24th of this uh, month, for example, or next month. Then there was a call from Minister of Education. They said, sir. The, His Highness Minister of Education invites you for a consultation on a very important issue on 24th of this, uh, on the same date. And he said, I have to look at the, my calendar. And he said, oh, I, I got to visit a high school at a, a small town. I couldn't come. Please uh, tell the Mr. Minister, uh, give me another date. 
They say, sir, it is minister. We cannot change. Please cancel the, the, the this uh, school, etc. He said, no, I don't matter. It doesn't matter for me. It is minister, etc. The the future of Italy, the students of this high school, they invited me. And I promised them to come. I will go there. And he went there. He refused the, the, the invitation of, he returned the invitation of Minister of Education. So I think we philosophers, we have to find, we have to be creative to connect with all people. Yeah. That's a, that's a wonderful story. I'm sure it's true. And uh, because, of course, he's such a best-selling author, he, he probably doesn't need the Minister of Education that much. But he's a man of his word. And he wanted to connect with the students, which is a tremendous thing. We have a few minutes remaining. Would anyone else like to pipe up? Uh, please take the opportunity. I think you've left some of us speechless, Ibrahim. Yeah, yeah. There is a, there is a uh, comment from the chat, but from Mexico City. Ah, yes. Okay. Mario Granados. He has a question. What do you think about confused subject of climate change? Ah, we're back to this again. Uh, yes. Okay. We cannot avoid it. Um, that it has been politicized, obviously. The world is not going to end tomorrow. And all the predictions about the world is going to end in five months and six months and two years, they're all false. But they have used this to scare people, to terrify people into conformity. And that's the political side of this. It's not to deny that yeah. climate changes. Climate changed long before we started walking around on this yeah. earth. And climate will change long after we're gone, if that's what happens to us. But um, I think the question from Mexico is a good one. Um, so he's asking, I gather that Mario is asking you, Ibrahim, to comment about the uh, dictatorial ways that we are being controlled by the media uh, in terms of this, uh, you know, in terms of this issue and other related ones. So yeah. uh, please go ahead and yeah. comment is, as you see you fit. Know, it, is, it is a very uh, good question. And it is very important. And, you know, to my surprise, the first international reaction to my book from on Rumi and Confucius, the meaning of rights from a lady from Mexico City. Very good. Uh, she wrote me a very good uh, email. But let me, uh, you know, say I also met Mr. Gorbachev in person. Then I wrote a book and I translated his major interviews into Turkish. And he made it very, very clear that he changed his mind to dismantle the Soviet system because of environmental problems. He said, I closed more than one dozen factories because they are destroying the environment. And he said, you know, I am still have in my, in my head the problem of the, 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 the Chernobyl because we didn't tell the truth to the people. Dozens of people rely trust yes. the state and start to uh, relate to the media which is controlled by state we said oh everything is okay don't don't worry it, it is a, just you know part of conspiracy theory and there is no problem they stayed at homes and they all gone and all the even we we we, we didn't tell the truth to the sci all scientists they just they venture into the into the, the into the, the uh you know chernobyl uh, in the plant and they're all gone so he said sincerely i do believe we have to change our mentality we have to care about nature we have to we have to we have to question our technologies or the philosophy behind our technology the philosophy uh, behind our consumption patterns he has a lot of wisdom but unfortunately the 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 the, the, the world is a crazy you know, there's still we have war in Ukraine. We have a lot of problems in the world because some leaders, you know, the, some narcissist leaders, they don't listen to the common sense. But it is good, you know, to be uh, to be uh, in the good part. If we are trying to 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 to, to connect with other people who who, think, who just thinks like us, we are trying to come with, come up with new solutions, alternative solutions. What can be done? And you see. But it's a struggle, you know. I I, I appreciate that the 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 the, the, uh, the as I said the, the uh, Kate from Oxford University, Professor Kate is doing a great job. Also, Catherine Hall from the Texas, she uh, she's also evangel. She, she, she 
she's a religious Christian, but she uh, although she, she's evangelical, she 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 just done dozens of meetings with the people, with the farmers, with the villagers, with the urban people, rural people, and she made a difference in in her region. I invited her to 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 give to, to, to give a talk at my class here at Clark University, and she has she has she said I have no time. So there are a lot of people ready to listen to us. So I think I'm trying my best to reach them, to talk with them, to share my ideas with them. This is I am. I came to Clark University for nine months. Now they say, please, can you stay for one more year? Because you know, I just I just respect every single piece of my my students every single sort of new ideas in my class and also uh, here uh, from my colleagues what are you teaching them at the moment ibrahim just to i just finished a course on environmental ethics in the in in the fall i will teach on ecofeminism wow, fantastic <laughs> you're you're really very ecofeminism for a muslim environmentalist yes that's quite that's quite unique it's a uh, we, we... <laughs> <laughs> I love you in uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts. You certainly yeah. are a refreshing yeah. educator. Yeah. Well, we're we're just about out of time. I'm going to send you a message from Sharon, who put her email address in the uh, chat room, and yeah. she's asking you for literature by your, uh, uh, you know, that you've written and other Islamic thinkers that can be shared with non-Islamic scholars. Yeah. So yeah. I will I will make sure you get her email address so you yeah. can yeah I got it I got it I got and it and copy okay. me back too I'm interested okay. to to learn more about this okay? okay so I guess um we're going to wrap this up and uh let me thank you on behalf of our APPA members and and also our guests for spending this time with us today it's been really fantastic many kisses Many kisses. Yeah, you're still with us. Love you. It is a Many pleasure kisses, for me. Ibrahim. It's a pleasure. It's a glad Many kisses. pleasure for me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pila kia pola. Mili selenika. Kitos, Pita. Pia, kitos. Kitos. Mili selenika. Ohi, ohi. Okay. I guess she's finished. Pusu, pusu. Okay. Can we can we give Ibrahim a, a round of virtual applause? We're all now on camera, so thank you very much. Thank for you, your time thank you. and your expertise. You're a great breath of fresh air and a wonderful educator. Thank you. So, let no, me did you want to take a picture before we go? You yes, usually I'll take, take if uh, if everyone will just stay on camera for a moment. Um, I'll take a picture of everybody smiling, okay? I'm my sleeping dress here. Yes, oh my one, God. <laughs> two, all right, one, two, three, smile, please. Yeah. Okay, hopefully I've got you. Um, and uh, so, Ibrahim, I just want to thank you again on behalf of APA. It's my pleasure. Um, uh, I don't speak Turkish, <laughs> but uh, in Arabic, shokran, salam alaikum. And I'll look forward to seeing you again, hopefully in person. Okay, be well okay. and safe, and continue your wonderful mission. Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me.